Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Caroline Garnett McGraw with The Clearing, where we help people to rewrite and let go of their limiting beliefs every single day. We're a non 12 step dual diagnosis residential addiction treatment center, which, as I like to say, translates to helping you to stop hating yourself and to stop being fenced in, caged, and held back by those limiting beliefs. So, today we're going to talk about where do they come from? Because when we know where they come from, we have a new insight as to how to heal them and how to let them go. So first, let's define our terms. Limiting beliefs are any thoughts or ideas that constrain us in some way. They often feel really heavy and they bring us down. And they are these generalizations that we've created about the way the world works. And often it's really hard to identify them or see past them because they tend to operate in our subconscious minds. So that's actually a really important clue as to where they come from, because when we're in childhood, we're operating in that subconscious state more often. And that is where a lot of our limiting beliefs get rooted and take root in our lives. So when we're children, as you know, we have a really incomplete understanding of the way the world works because our brains are not fully formed yet. We're still growing. We're still developing. And the author of the best-selling book, The Biology of Belief, Dr. Bruce Lipton, talks about how from birth to around age seven, we operate primarily in brain wavelengths that are very, very close to a hypnotic state. I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, it's the theta wave state. And when we're operating like this, we're just recording. We're like video recorders. We see what the adults in our lives are doing and we just download that. We take all of that in and we internalize it because we don't have the cognitive mechanisms that discern, all right, you know, this is, this is real and this is the nature of reality and this is not. We're just recording all of it. We're taking all of it in. We're sponges. We're soaking it up because we, again, we don't have that high level of discernment built into our brains yet. We're little, we're young. So obviously this is a time where we can subconsciously download a lot of limiting beliefs. So for example, if your parents were always saying things like there's never enough money to go around, or we're always going to struggle, then that gets ingrained in your subconscious thinking. If our parents are constantly talking about, you know, there's danger around every corner and you can't trust people outside of the family, or even if they don't talk about those things, but they act in ways that communicate those things, that's really powerful because a lot of time it's not so much what people say, but it's the messages that we take from their behaviors. So as an example, if, for example, if your parents were hitting each other and you tried to tell a teacher about it. And the message you got was, that's not what we do. We don't do that. Then even if you didn't hear that verbally, you internalize, oh, I'm not supposed to trust anyone outside of the family system. I'm not supposed to tell the truth to people on the outside. And you might carry that belief with you through so many other situations in life where actually it would serve you better to speak up and to tell but you don't because the child inside of you has made a rule. And that's another good way to identify a limiting belief. They often come with words such as always and never. So I should never tell someone else what's actually going on with me, or I should always be quiet. Those are very limiting beliefs because as an adult, as you can see, they are not accurate in every situation. Sometimes it is safe to be quiet, but sometimes it's safer to speak up. So we really want to examine these beliefs for what they are and take them apart and not just keep them subconscious. So I wanted to read you a quote from someone who's done a lot of work on her own limiting beliefs. Um, her name is Laura Parrott Perry, and she is an author, a speaker, a woman in recovery from alcohol abuse, and she's also a sexual abuse survivor. And she says this about the limiting beliefs that we internalize as children. Because I don't want to frame this as, oh, it's all our parents' fault or it's all our caregivers' fault. No, a lot of this is things that we create within ourselves and with good reason. So I'll read you what she says. She writes, 
kids have a limited understanding of the world to begin with. And so when you get dealt the facts of your trauma, you don't understand them. So you build a story around them. But sometimes the story that you build around them is at least as harmful as the trauma. So I'll read that last line again. Sometimes the story you build is at least as harmful as the trauma. So what she's talking about there is that when something inexplicable happens to you as a child, maybe you endure abuse or neglect, something happens that really shakes you up and rocks your world. And again, the psychological definition of trauma is anything that is shocking to you personally, it's totally subjective. So you undergo this trauma, something happens and you cannot make sense of it. You just don't have a framework for it. And so what you do is you try to find meaning. So you write a story, which for example, could be, I should never trust anyone or I should never tell anyone the truth of what I'm thinking and feeling. It's not safe. And the important thing to understand here is that that story at the time that you wrote it might have served you very well. That story might have protected you. That story legitimately was probably the best that you could do at the time with what you understood, with the resources that you had. So that story served a purpose. And that's what's important to understand here about limiting beliefs. They exist for a reason and they serve a purpose. Having limiting beliefs does not mean that you're crazy or that you will never recover or that you'll never heal. No, it means that you had pain in your life. It means that your parents or caregivers had pain in their lives and limiting beliefs arose from that place of pain. That's where they came from. They were, arose for a purpose. And so that's really helpful when it comes to rewriting them because you can acknowledge them for the role that they played. You can say to yourself, you know, I get that you existed for a reason, but that reason isn't valid anymore. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to rewrite you. I'm going to choose another belief because now that we're adults, we have the capacity to choose the thoughts that we think, to choose the beliefs that we adapt. We're not in that default video recording mode that we were in as, as children. So just as we wrap up, I am going to take questions and comments, but I just want to share one more piece. And this piece is how do we rewrite those limiting beliefs? And this is something we teach in our program. And I did go into more detail on this on a previous video, and I'll post the link in the comments for that if you want to dig deeper. But here is the template that we use when you've identified a limiting belief. Maybe it's, I should never tell anyone what I'm really thinking, for example. And here's how we work with it. So first you get centered, you go to a place of love and peace and compassion within yourself. And the way that you do that is you take some deep breaths, you calm your physical body, and then you turn your mind and turn your heart to someone or something for whom it's easy for you to feel love. So you might think of a pet, you might think of a child, just someone or something for whom there's just this natural outflowing of love. And when you're in that state, then you start to work with your limiting belief. So as I said, the belief is I should never tell anyone the truth of what I'm thinking. So with that love in your heart, you forgive yourself for holding that belief. You say, I forgive myself for accepting the limiting belief that I should never trust anyone with, or tell anyone what I'm really thinking. And the truth going forward for me is, and then you fill in that blank with what that voice of unconditional love inside of you would say. And there is no right or wrong answer here. There is only tapping into that place of love and compassion inside of yourself. So everybody's answer is going to be a little bit different, but one example might be, you know, I forgive myself for accepting the limiting belief that I should never speak my truth and the truth going forward for me is that I trust myself to say what's real, or it could be I'm fully loved and it's safe for me to speak up. 
you can, you can play with it and work with what feels right for you. The statements that I make that resonate with me um, might not be exactly the right, the right ones for you. So again, it's all about connecting with that place of self-compassion. And another final key point is that this work engages you on the emotional level. And a lot of times when people talk about letting go of limiting beliefs, there's this assumption that it's only mental level thought work. And that is really important. I do not want to minimize that. We certainly emphasize the mental level work in our program. However, we also emphasize the emotional level work because if you don't operate on this emotional level and offer yourself that forgiveness and that compassion, then that part of you just stays stuck. There's a part of you that resents yourself for holding that limiting belief and you get into this kind of tug of war with yourself. But when you're offering that compassion and that forgiveness, it breaks away and suddenly there's more expansiveness, there's more peace. So the point being, it's really important to work with those limiting beliefs on the emotional level and not just the mental level. We need to not just rewrite them, but to forgive ourselves for having adopted them in the first place. Another powerful line that often comes up when people do this self-forgiveness work, they say, you know, the truth going forward for me is that I was doing the best that I could. Back then, when you adopted that limiting belief or your parents adopted it, you were doing the best that you could. And now that you know better, you can make different choices. So I hope that has been freeing for you. And before we close, I am going to just check in on the comments. Uh, Susan says, I need to hear this so, so hard to recover from childhood abuse. Yeah, Susan, I hear you. And I'm glad you're here. And we actually were publishing a post series this week on about how adverse childhood experiences, such as abuse and neglect and trauma, really shape the rest of our lives and how they impact us. And on one hand, it, it can be really hard to look at those events for what they were and say, wow, that was a terrible thing that happened to me. And I was young and I didn't understand it. And I put up all these beliefs and I put up all these walls to try and keep myself safe. But then there's also this beautiful freedom that comes when you can look at that and think, wow, you know, not only did I survive, but that the part of me that created that limiting belief was doing so because it wanted to protect me. It was trying to do something to help me. Its original purpose was positive, even if it might not be serving you now, but it came into being in order to try and protect you. And that can be very, very freeing to realize like, oh, you know, the, the part of me that I resented for holding me back, it had a positive purpose and it wasn't random and it wasn't trying to bring me down. It was trying to keep me safe. But a lot of this work is about trusting that you, the adult you, will take care of yourself and keep yourself safe and that you don't need those limiting beliefs anymore, that they've outlived their purpose and that now you trust yourself in a new way to be able to take care of yourself. So I hope that's helpful. Susan, thank you for commenting. And just as we wrap up, thank you all for watching. And I invite you, if you're interested in connecting with like-minded people, you can join us for our Healing Underlying Core Issues Facebook group, where we post and share about limiting beliefs, judgments, um, adverse childhood experiences, trauma, all of these topics. And if you are seeking treatment for yourself or for a loved one, you can always give us a free confidential call at 425 275-8600. We're here to help. Thank you for watching.